Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to 3307. This is where I take a look at the news and happenings in and around Elite Dangerous. This week I take a look at Frontier's uh, somewhat disappointing June development update. Lavecon once again goes virtual. And there's a massive update to Dark Nebula's VMX software. The long-awaited development update arrived on the 30th of June. Now keep in mind that this is the update that Frontier have been hyping for many weeks now since the beginning of June at the very least, where they effectively said, back when they effectively said, yes, they understand, words don't mean much, but just wait and see what we have to show you at the end of June. Now all of this was originally intended to come in the form of a live stream with the, uh, with the developers. Frontier did mention that many, many times. Unfortunately, uh, about a day, maybe two, before the information arrived, Frontier changed it from a live stream with the developers to a forum post. And they said the reason for this is so that the information could be uh, basically laid out in a more accessible manner. So, what did this development update actually contain? Well, it contained information on what Frontier have achieved in the previous updates. That's updates 1 to 4. That's post-Odyssey release. Stuff we already knew. It also contained some previews for update 5, which was to release around about 12 hours after this post went live, so more information that wasn't really needed. The most important information then, the most uh, valid information I think that most people are going to want to uh, hear about are the top five issues from the issue tracker that Frontier picked up and made some specific comments on, as well as a uh, future progress on the uh, longer term roadmap. So uh, let's have a quick look at each of these. But the first top five issue is improvements to lighting. I just say here, many of the lighting issues have been improved across previous updates. The last major set relates to the update of ship cockpits, which will be in update 5. We will continue to monitor your feedback. So the takeaway there from here at least is that by the time we get update 5, which released yesterday, all the lighting issues will be fixed. Now I can tell you that actually hasn't happened. Uh, whilst many lighting issues have no doubt been fixed, one of the most significant ones which is a space being far too dark, has not been fixed. Or to put that another way, whilst there's definitely been many different lighting fixes done over the five updates, the dark space issue, at least as far as I can see it right here, still seems to be somewhat of an issue. Now, I know what some of you are probably feeling. Yes, space should be dark. However, there's a difference between having space dark as a design decision and space dark uh, due to the game being broken. So what Frontier have effectively done with this issue is put in a bit of a bodge fix. Well, actually, two uh, kind of bodge fixes, as, at least as far as I can tell. And I'm no developer, but I can only yet see what my eyes are showing me here on this screen. So the first bodge fix is to improve the lighting inside the ships rather than outside the ships. So give the illusion that things are a bit brighter here. Yes, cockpits are now brighter when in dark areas but the outsides are still very, very dark. The, you know, the environment, the key area. The second part, the element they've gone into is they have seem to have fixed the gamma slider, but they've uh, basically put a greater range on this now. It goes up to a very high level of brightness and a very low level of darkness. The main issue, as I see it, though, seems to be with some of the shadows. Now, right here, I'm positioned behind a planet, so of course, things are very, very dark. Also, in the distance, there is a moon. Now, that moon shouldn't actually be in any shadow, and you'll see it brighten up here. Just look at that. So, effectively, I was in the shadow of the planet myself, but that moon wasn't. This is like being on Earth at night and looking up at the moon. You can still see the moon because it's reflecting sunlight, unless it's an eclipse. So, you can see the, still see the moon even though you are in darkness, and this is what should be going on here. Now, moving on to uh, planetary features, or degraded terrain textures, actually. Uh, pathways have been identified to improve this, and a team is actively working on this area. So, uh, yet, yeah, terrain textures, ground textures not working so good, so they're fixing that. Not much more to comment on that. Here's a big one, uh, planetary features that appear to repeat. Now, Down to Earth Astronomy put a very good example out there on this, and I highly urge you to go and watch his video. I'll link it in the video description below. But I'll link just a few seconds on the screen right here, just so we can, can get an idea of what the issue actually is. So to this, Frontiers say, we understand this is an important topic with the community, 
As mentioned at the start of the article, which you can read, I'll link that below, we want to share the challenges as well as the positives. Investigations are still ongoing, however it must be said that this is proven to be a very significant technical challenge. At the current time, we do not have a workable solution, but investigations will continue and we will keep you updated. So effectively what Frontier is saying here is that they do see there is an issue, they understand what people are pointing out, however they don't have a way to fix it at least right now. Moving on to issue 4, Anarchy Factions and the BGS. After extensive investigations we found that missions against Anarchy Factions were too impactful. This has been addressed, we are making further tweaks with update 5 and will continue to monitor this as closely as possible to see if further action is uh, required. So they uh, think they've fixed that, I'm sure they'll be waiting for uh, feedback from the player base. Issue 5, SPS performance, FPS performance in Odyssey. Pathways, there's that word again, have also been identified with performance and the team are actively working on this area. So uh, yeah, the uh, five updates released so far post Odyssey have brought some performance fixes However, they don't seem to have fixed the more significant issues I'm noticing some uh, quite problematic areas which you can see happening on the uh, screen right here. Finally, in the end of the dev post, Frontier move on to the uh, future progress, the longer roadmap, so I'm going to read this out as well. As mentioned in our previous post, our aim was to focus on the initial set of updates and then turn our attention back onto console. There's no doubt that the additional development to work on these updates and the community requests pose a challenge to our previous plans and timelines. So uh, yeah, that's what they say and there seems to be that the work is going to take a very long time and may even impact currently uh, ongoing work. We are actively investigating, reviewing and remeasuring the further roadmap, but these things will take a little time. We understand that this may not be as much information as people may have wished to hear, there's an understatement, but we hope that the open and transparent nature of this update means that you'll bear with us while we pull those things together. What we can say is that through these monthly updates, we will be able to share and keep you informed every step of the way. So a very long paragraph there to basically tell us they've got nothing to tell us at the moment. Uh, it seems that ongoing work has impacted whatever roadmap they had planned. That roadmap may or may not have changed. They seem completely unsure as to what's going to be going on into Odyssey and indeed Elite Dangerous in the future. And my takeaway from that is they are basically uh, trying to figure that out at the moment. And who knows, that may have impacted the uh, relatively lack of information in this supposedly significant development update. So yeah, overall a disappointing update, both in terms of the amount of information that it contained, which is uh, very, very little, as well as most of the information being not exactly um, on the positive side. Not to mention that around about half of this update actually contained information that we already knew. So moving away from that not exactly encouraging information from Frontier, let's move towards something far more positive, the community. Okay then, LaveCon, the annual fan-created Elite Dangerous convention. This year, like last year, again is going to be online only. Uh, it was originally going to be a physical event, but things in the UK are not allowing that to happen at the moment, so uh, it's back to being online only. So the LaveCon timetable, which you can see on the screen right here, is showing a start of 6pm, and these are all in UK times. The event will then continue into tomorrow, that Saturday, and into a Sunday as well. So you can see all the events and uh, timetables listed out on screen right here. Uh, if you do want more information, you can find both this timetable as well as additional information through the links in the video description. Do check them out. Dark Nebula has released a major update for their VMX music software for Elite as well as released a new music pack by Miguel Johnson. Dark Nebula make a voice controlled context sensitive music software which allows you to assign your choice of music to uh, in-game events as well as to use their own composed music. This new major update sees over 50% of their system recoded. New system VMX Pulsar allows you to assign music from YouTube, Vimeo, Odyssey, Facebook and many other sources uh, to in-game events and voice triggers. 
There's new assignable events for Odyssey have been added as well, such as uh, Helmet Mode, which applies effects to VMX's voiceovers, simulating a radio crackle whilst you walk around. So the software is quite extensive, it does have a bunch of different features. Another is another major addition is the new VMX cloud processing, which uses a real-time cloud processing to slow down music by 50 to 300 percent, resulting in a slow-fi remixes of tracks. Pulsar allows you to create event assignment groups also, which means you can go for example have named groups for film music, chill out music, or whatever you like and switch between them depending on your mood. There's also some bug perform bugs, issue fixes and performance gains in there as well. So if this sounds at all interesting to you, then do check out the link in the video description where you can find a bunch more information. There's also this week a new Buckyball run. This is taking place via Lavecon. Uh, Buckyball has been going for a very, very long time and these are some absolutely fantastic events that a lot of people have enjoyed for years now. This one, as I say, is related to a Lavecon. It's called the Lave, uh, Lavecon Lockdown Challenge. You can see everything you need to know in the video description below, where you can see an extensive thread written out by organizer Alec Turner. Uh, yeah, all the information there you need, so well worth taking a look at. That then brings us to an end of this episode of 3307. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and girls next time.